quick, tell me the difference between these two games. Clearly, the game on the left looks way better. However, the game on the right does have more playable characters. Side note, I don't know if you can name chess figures characters, but for the sake of this video, I'll allow it. So, in today's devlog, we're going to surpass chess with the amount of characters we have in the game. Oh, oh how many does chess have you say? Six? What? What the f Wait, do I have time to make six? Uh, nah, nah, I don't. So, let's make half of that. Now, what's very important for me is to make every character unique, with its unique moves, attacks and personality. For example, our archer. He's sort of overpowered, like a queen from chess, but that's okay, because he's the main character of the game, so he can be strong. But for our side characters, we can't just make them OP, we actually have to think about how to make them fun to play and fit in with the story. So let's get to our first new character. Who's that Pokemon? It's a dog. If you think of hunting, Traditional middle age hunting. What do you think was a thing that hunts couldn't happen without? Well, of course, dogs. We all know that dogs are fast, at least faster than humans. So I wanted to capture that with its moves and attack set. I thought making it to be able to move up to two squares at a time would do exactly that. But the only thing it did do is make it way too strong. I needed a way to limit its move set without losing the feeling of him being fast. The way I fixed that required me to add what I call directional actions, which means that the last move you make determines the next direction of directional attacks and moves. So if I move to the left, I'll be able to move two squares to the left, and the same if I move to the right, or up or down. This required me to rewrite the way I handle available moves and attacks, but it was worth it since adding new action types is just super easy and fast now. And just look at this good boy. Also. I posted my approach to animating this character on my Patreon, so if the process of a programmer making animation interests you, or you just want to support the development of Deer Hunt, go and check it out. Second link in the description. Who's that Pokemon? It's a Spearman? Dude, I need to come up with better names for those guys. Adding Spearman wasn't that hard of a thing to do. After drawing the sprites and animating him, it took me just 15 minutes to set him up. I told you that rewrite was worth it. I gave him a limiting moveset, but quite a big and wide attack range, so he can be used for trapping the deer. And there isn't much more to the Spearman, so we are going to focus on a few important problems the game has right now and that need fixing. See this? This is what's called sprite clipping. It appears when two or more sprites are drawn on the same layer. What's happening is those sprites are fighting over which one should be on top of the other, and this is a big no-no. Luckily, this line of code fixes it. Moving on to problem number two. Look at these white and red dots. They tell you where you can move and attack. The problem being, they're ugly. <laughs> and they overlap each other, so you can't tell if you can only move or attack or both on a given tile. So a few minutes of pixel art magic and bam, fixed. Now problem number 3 is a little different. It has been brought to my attention that my archer character looks way too similar to an asset from Adam Sionis' game Arrowbound, so I will be redesigning the character asset in the near future. For the time being, we will use a white square for the archer sprite. Moving on from problems, because who wants to hear about that? Let's get into the third and last new character for this devlog. Who's that Pokemon? It's a beehive. I have saved the best for the last, as the beehive is something that's going to add so many possibilities for the game. The basic concept of the beehive is that obviously inside it live bees. <laughs> You can't move the beehive itself, but what you can do is line up a shot with the archer, and if you decide to shoot it, the beehive will break, and a swarm of bees will come out, permanently blocking the squares around it from the deer. Because the deer is scared of bees, I guess? In order to implement this, I needed to add shootable entities to the game, and make a shooting state for the archer. 
which just expands the possibilities of the future characters immensely. As for the bees themselves, they use the same script to move as the fireflies from the last episode do. And that is it for this video. But before you leave, I want to remind you about the competition that I announced in the last devlog. When this channel reaches 1000 subscribers, there is going to be a competition for you to get your own character into the game. So make sure to join our discord, link in the description, because that's where the competition is going to be happening once we hit our goal. There will be a special chat for you to post your ideas and out of those ideas I will choose 5 that the community is going to vote on, so make sure to subscribe. Also, if you want to support the development of the deer hunt, check out my Patreon, or if you want to learn game development yourself, give a try to my 100% free game development beginner course, first link in the description.